contest. Testing, testing. So he says.
She is. Good job. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bell Springs United Methodist Church on this fine Sunday morning, beautiful Sunday morning outside. And to everyone who's uh, joining us on Facebook this morning, we welcome you as well. We're glad to have you with us. Thank you all for coming in this morning. Just a few, uh, a couple of opening announcements. First off, on Wednesday, July 27th, on Wednesday, July 27th at 6 p.m., there will be a church council meeting to which you are all invited. At that time, we will discuss the old sanctuary and the removal uh, of the old sanctuary and we will have a vote that evening to do it so anyone who wants to speak is welcome to come again Wednesday July 27th at 6 p.m. I also have a beautiful card to read this morning it says thank you for having such a giving spirit you are truly a, a blessing Thank you all for the wonderful welcome and the gift cards you gave us. We can't wait to get to know you better and see what God has in store for us. And this is from Pastor Bob and Margie Jerry. So I'll put this in the back if you want to take a look at it. I don't have any other announcements unless some of you have an announcement. Is there anything else we should talk about at this point? Well, then I will, greet, I will greet you in the name of the Lord. Good morning. Please join me for our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you in your house. Bless all those who are here with us this morning, either in person or on Facebook, and bless those who cannot be with us, but we will remember them in your name. Be with all those who are sick and ill this morning. We pray for healing for them. Bless all those who mourn and grieve. Please send your Holy Spirit to give them comfort. We pray for the leaders of our country. They need your help, O oh Lord, to, root, to lead in a Christian manner. And we ask for a blessing on this service. May it be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for our opening hymn. It is number 165. Number 165, Hallelujah, What a Savior. This is one that we may not be too familiar with, so I'm going to ask Angie to play through it one time. Hey, 
now in heaven exalted high hallelujah what a savior and he comes our glorious king oh his ransom home to bring then a new this song will sing hallelujah what a savior and now please turn to number 314 in the garden Three fourteen. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as he tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet Hush, they're singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I say in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling, every bids me go to the void. calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Well, it's so good for us. I, the microphone works first time today, so, uh, you know, we're, we're uh, excited about that. But it's so good to see all of you here uh, again today. I was expecting a big crowd on the new preacher's first Sunday, but uh, now y'all have come back the next day. That's quite a compliment to me. I, I'm glad to see y'all. I'm working on, you know, how to know who everybody is. One of the things that I always have found interesting every place I've ever pastored is how do you count? And what I found out is there's a whole bunch of y'all that count around here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Daryl and I were kind of going over and trying to figure out who was here this last week, and he said to me, David Young's a good person to help with that, so I sent him our list, and he went over and took people off. I was expecting him to put more people on, but I asked him, I said, do you count? He said, I, I, yes. He said, I count, Lisa counts, Carson counts, then we average it. <laughs> they came up with 61 last week. Then uh, after he got through taking people off my list, he said 58. Then I talked to Roy, and Roy said there were 62 here last week. And I can count. <laughs> but then once he uh, helped me with the list, and Becky helped me with the list, and, uh, you know, we got up to 60. So I know 60 names of people that were here last week, and yet putting names and faces together, I hadn't completely got all that together. So we'll work on that some more, but... I did realize already today that there are some of you here who weren't here last week, and so uh, I'm, I'm working on that. So y'all help me, and uh, we do appreciate the uh, way that you've welcomed us here, and several of you have asked, how's your week been this week? And it's been pretty intense because, you know, there was a funeral this week of... Uh, uh, Sheree Bratcher, and we want to pray for their family as we pray. But one of the things that has been mentioned to me over and over again this week is that we were supposed to recognize July birthdays last week, and we didn't do it. And that's my fault. I'd been told, but I didn't do it. So... Uh, so I guess what I will say is, any of y'all got a July birthday? Are you willing to come? I mean, how do I don't know the procedure here. Is that something that we do with the birthday bank up here somehow? So any of y'all got a birthday? Come up front. You've got a birthday. Oh, look, there's some of you got stuff you're going to put in the birthday bank. And All right. Reggie and Elena and that's good. Uh, there's a big bunch of birthday people uh, for July. Carol, Angie. Well, I don't really have a birthday. You you just want it's to put money in there. My dad. Okay. There you go. Okay. It's Verse, birthdays and anniversaries. So, are there anniversaries too that we need to get yeah, people up here? All right. And we we should get somebody else to do this because y'all know what you're doing. <laughs> That's right. I had an anniversary I this month. Uh, I'll put some in there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Did y'all hear what Lewis said? He said, I'm supposed to give each person up here $10 out of my own pocket. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah that, that worked. Uh, and, and by the way, Margie and I celebrated our 41st, 44th anniversary on July 1st. So, uh, you know, we're, we're up here together. And so uh, we're going to sing, right? You're supposed and, to go down the list first and say what's your birthday and what's your anniversary. Oh. See, I'm getting instruction this week. Okay, so, no, Carol, no. tell us. Uh, I'm here because my dad would have been 96 on July the 3rd. That's okay. All right. <laughs> I, I guess I better stand out here. Reg, what's your... My birthday's July 1. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> and, and, you're, and you're 25, right? Yes, was. Mm -hmm. uh, David? My birthday's today, and I'm 66. 
Oh, today, all right. Lisa? Uh, Carson reminded me that Mamaw's birthday was yesterday, and she was 93. And I, she's going to pretend to be my significant other, and um, my anniversary is the 23rd. 11 years. 11 years we've been married. <laughs> Getting close to that. Yeah, all right. Uh, my birthday was July the 8th. July the 8th, all right. My Elena. birthday is the 22nd, and I'll be 29. All right. <laughs> All right, David and Alicia. Uh, Paul and Alicia. Paul. <laughs> I'll work on it. Yeah. Right. There's several Davids around here, but you're Paul. I knew I'm that. Paul. Uh, That's Alicia. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> and y'all's anniversary is? July 23rd. Okay. 17 years. 17 years. Okay. Good deal. Come on, guys. 17 17. And I'm going to assume that Wyatt's birthday uh, is this month, right? It was yesterday. 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 All right. I thought he looked about one year old, so that's kind of what I figured on that. But he's a big one year old. Uh huh. Okay. Good deal. And? Uh, it's our, it was our 39th anniversary on July 9th. Okay. Well, all right. And so we sing, and y'all probably got a special way to sing this, so, uh, you know, i got to learn it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. to you. Usually we'll do it next time we have a prayer with them. No. The third year. I, all right. So, you know, Angie pointed out her birthday is the 30th, and Lewis told me that I'm supposed to have a special prayer with, with all of y'all. And... Let's do have prayer, but we want to remember people who have special needs today, and of course we want to pray for the Sheree Bratcher family as they uh, buried her on Thursday. Are there others that we want to remember today? Yes, Elena. Um, a coworker of mine's husband, uh, they were in Florida on vacation, and he the grill caught on fire, and he was in the burn off unit. Let's pray for him. Others? Yes, Jane. Uh, I need prayers for my continued test result, and if all goes well, I'm having surgery on this Wednesday. This Wednesday? Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chris, and we want to pray for Jacob. Yes, yeah. I want to pray for my mama. She gets her shot by. <laughs> okay. Yes, Angie. Um, I have not mentioned this before, but John's brother, Kenny, passed away last month, and um, it's been a long, hard family situation. So I would like to say, if you have a grudge against someone in your family, get over it. Amen. Amen. Because they're gone. And you, what did you do? You didn't overcome this grudge. Uh, it was very sad. We had a service yesterday. And um, it's just sad to realize that you got mad over something and you haven't spoken to these people for seven years. They're the only brothers that, that each other had. And I just, it's just been on my heart to pray about it and just get over whatever your problem is. Talk it out. 
or they're going to be gone. So I just yeah. wanted to say that. With the Lord's help. You can only do it with the Lord's help. Yes, please. Unspoken request. Want to pray for him? Yes, I'll. I have several patients that are going through a really hard time with careful care. We have needs. Others? Let's lift our hearts before the Lord today. Oh, Lord. We thank you for again today for the opportunity to come together in this place, for the fact that we know that you've promised to be here amongst us. And so, Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for what you've done for us, especially your death on the cross and your rising again from the dead and sitting at the right hand to, of the Father today. And we thank you for the fact that your word tells us that you are making intercession for us. And so as we pray here today, Lord, we know you are also praying for us, and we thank you for that. We have so many things going on in our hearts and lives today. And we just ask that your Holy Spirit would just come and be with us and help us in the midst of these things. We've mentioned several prayer requests here today, but we recognize that not every need that we have in our hearts today uh, has been mentioned out loud in this place. So we pray for those that are mentioned uh, today amongst us, but we also pray for those that we carry in our hearts that are not been mentioned uh, today as well. We pray, Lord, that you would work within our hearts, that in the midst of all of the different things that have happened to us, that you would guide us and direct us to help us to be more and more the people you've called us to be. And even as we've heard mentioned today, that there is a need for us to respond in the way you've called us to live rather than just operate according to our feelings of the moment. And so, Lord, help us to be obedient to you as we reach out to others around us. Now, Lord, we pray not only for our personal needs here today. I pray, Lord, that you would guide us in, uh, as a nation and as a world. We recognize today that there are people who are suffering today. There is war and violence that is beyond sometimes our own ability to understand what people are going through, and we pray that you'd help them today. And even as Daryl has already prayed today, we pray for the leaders of our nation and for all those who serve in every position today. We pray for them, Lord. Guide and direct. Help us to be the people you've called us to be and give us the ability to hear your voice both as a nation and as individuals as well. Now, Lord, in this place today, guide us and help us. And even as we take a moment of silence just now before you, help us, Lord, to bring our private needs to you. <coughs> Could we pray together the prayer our Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Ushers, will you come and help us with this morning's tithes and offerings?
from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And we want to ask our young people to, uh-oh, I'm missing something. Uh, go ahead and be seated. <laughs> Somebody instruct me if I, there's something else I need to do. Young people, come forward today for the children's time. Come on up here, Rusty. <laughs> Got others that are coming? Just y'all two. Okay. Don't don't hold her down. Uh, she's had enough of me. Uh, come on. <laughs> All right. How you doing today? All right, sir. You're one of the first people that greeted me today. I'm so glad to see you up here today. Rusty's coming back. She's, she's been chased, I see. Uh, well, it's a good thing. Everything good this week? Y'all been up to anything special? Um, my Uncle Josh's birthday was yesterday. So y'all had a special time for that. Yeah, good deal. All right. Well, one of the passages of Scripture, and I'm going to preach about it this morning, is about when Jesus went to these folks' house, and they were having special time together, meal and all that. We do that in our families, don't we? And one, there were two sisters there. One of them was rushing around seeing about the other meal, uh, about the meal and the, uh, everything they were doing. And the other was just listening to Jesus. So the one that was working, she didn't like it. So she said, Jesus, tell my sister to get in here and go to work. And Jesus said, she's figured out the best way. And so, we're going to talk about that this morning. Is following and adoring and loving Jesus. And that's the most important thing. Let me pray with you and then y'all can head on back to where you need to be. Oh Lord, we do thank you for our children and for all those who come to know you. We just ask that you'd help us live the way you've called us to live particularly today, Lord, in learning more about how to love you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Uh, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, well, and, you know, as you can tell, I'm working my way through trying to figure out how to fit in and we're going to work all that out and of course uh, how things have been done and how they'll be done is always a work in progress because things do change from time to time but uh, it's uh, it's all right now you know one of the things and by the way we had building committee this week meeting and uh, some of the Different members of the committee walked into the old sanctuary and looked around, and one of the things that was said in the midst of all that is, all those pews out there in there could be put in here. And so I think that's probably going to happen soon, um, just because they could be used in here. And we can't go in there now, is what I've been told, um, which is hard, isn't it? Um, and so we're sorting through some of that and trying to figure out how all that will work. But, you know, one of the things that uh, I'm trying to understand is, you know, how does that all fit? Because we're worshiping here in what we know is our fellowship hall. And, uh, you know, I've talked a little bit with some different parts of y'all today. And, of course, 
Y'all, I've been at this most of my life now as a pastor. Uh, you know, I smile a little bit because Margie and I celebrate our 44th year of marriage, but uh, those years have all been in the ministry. And so, you know, our lives have kind of revolved around being in church together. As a matter of fact, we dated in church, and there are stories there that I may tell someday, but, uh, <laughs> but not today. Uh, you know, of course, last week, uh, as we got started in the service, and I'm still getting used to the idea that, you know, i got to leave here within five minutes after we close the service because I've got to be somewhere else to preach. I had never had that experience in any place that I've been pastored before, but I don't necessarily consider it a hard thing. It's just that I don't have the opportunity to visit and greet you all afterwards, and of course, I was concerned about being late last week, and, you know, we walked into Blanton's at five minutes after their regular starting time, and I've heard about from other pastors that some places the church, they go ahead and get started without the pastor, not at Blanton's. <laughs> They're going to sit there and wait till we get there, and uh, so, you know, I've got to work that out, and one of the things I realized almost from the time I walked in that door is that those people know y'all. Y'all know them, right? Uh, for the most part. And so, you know, there's connections with that. So I was real concerned about the fact that we went, you know, five minutes late last week. And then I watched the video and realized that we started five minutes late last week. That's the reason we finished five minutes late, right? And Y'all know what, how, how well we did at starting on time this week? We started five minutes late. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's just how things work sometimes, so you've got to get used to that. Now, I immediately, after having conversations early with some folks, uh, changed some things around here. Have y'all noticed? I don't know whether you noticed or not, but I'm going to make a point of it today because... Uh, I want us to use them, and that is that uh, I heard people saying uh, we used to have times when the pastor would invite us forward to pray, and we hadn't done that much lately, and so I started looking around and saying, How, what can we do? How can we do that? And I found under this table over here these benches, so that I put them out here. And as I was talking to uh, Daryl about that, uh, he said, and I already noticed that you've got these hard tile floors and most of us are not going to kneel directly on them because my knees would be injured, right? Uh, and some of y'all, other things. So I mentioned that to Daryl and he went and found us some cushions. These are much better than what I would have thought of. So these are here for the purpose of putting them down on the floor and kneeling on them. And it is my purpose today uh, to preach a short message and then to invite us to come and pray. Now, we need the Lord. Somebody said to me in the last couple of weeks, you know, we're in that fellowship hall and it's not a holy place. And my response to that is, well, then what makes it a holy place is the presence of the Lord. That's the only thing that can make something a holy place. Now, since I've been here on the scene as your pastor, one of the things that I've done regularly is I've gone into the old sanctuary uh, and prayed that it wouldn't collapse on me. But I've walked around in there and I've prayed and I've had that sense that that is a place that significant things spiritually have happened in the lives of people. And so I understand the concern and the feeling that that's a place that is a holy place. But what makes it a holy place is that it is the place where people have met with God. Now, where do you meet with God? 
wherever you're willing to meet with God is the answer to that. Now there's a passage of scripture that I'm looking at today, and by the way, I've been you know, looking around it, uh, trying to figure out what version of the Bible I'm going to use from. I may switch from day to day, but I'm looking at the New King James. There are a couple of you all today who have pointed out to me that you brought your Bibles because I said people ought to bring their Bibles today, and I'm encouraged by that, okay? But I'm looking in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, uh, and I, we want to read today at verse 38. And Holly's going to come and read scripture for us today. Good morning. Good morning. Today's New Testament lesson is read from Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, from the New King James Version. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain wo woman named Martha welcomed in him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered her and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Holly. All right, now this is a story from the Gospel of Luke, and it's unusual because this is the only place in the Bible where this story is told. It's not told in Matthew or Mark or John. It's only told here. And it's told as if this is a completely isolated kind of incident uh, Jesus went to these people home, and there was uh, two sisters, one named Martha and Mary. And, of course, what we know from other places in the other Gospels and in Luke as well, that these are pretty well-known folks. Mary and Martha were, had a brother there also named Lazarus. Y'all heard of that story. And they lived in Bethany. Now... We know where Bethany is. Uh, in my first trip over there to Jerusalem, uh, one of the things that they do regularly is that they take tour groups up onto the top of the Mount of Olives. Y'all heard of that? Well, Mount of Olives is just across the Kidron Valley where there is a major today modern highway, but I'm told there was a big highway back in Jesus' day as well that went through the middle of the Kidron Valley. But then just on the Jerusalem side of that highway is the gate into the city of Jerusalem there called the Eastern Gate. Y'all heard songs about the Eastern Gate? Uh, it's closed now. They don't allow anybody to come in and out of the Eastern Gate of the city of Jerusalem. But, uh, you know, I... Uh, Angie was with me and Margie when we went, uh, you know, some years back. Uh, that's how we first met. And, uh, uh, of course, her son Lewis was with us too, and we got to be good friends on, on that trip as well. But uh, I had been there before, and so one of the things they do is they start you over on the top of the Mount of Olives, and you look down onto the eastern gate, and just on the other side of the eastern gate is the Temple Mount, where today, of course, is the Dome of the Rock, but there was a grand temple there. So one of the things that happens if you stand there on the Mount of Olives and look over into Jerusalem, you're looking right down into the Temple Mount. And it's quite an impressive scene. Well, the city of Bethany is, was just, and is, by the way, it's still there, uh, is just on the other top side of the crest of the Mount of Olives uh, from the city of Jerusalem. And really, it's not that far. I mean, in just a few minutes, you can walk down the Mount of Olives and across the Kidron Valley into the city of Jerusalem. So, 
Mary and Martha and Lazarus had the largest house in the city of Bethany. Bethany was known as a poor poverty area because, but Jesus would go there often because he visited Jerusalem often and their house was always open to them. And so interestingly, in this little story, it must be his first time to visit there because the way this story is told, Martha is rushing all around to make sure that everybody is taken care of and Mary is just sitting with the others that are there listening to the teaching of Jesus. Now let me talk to you about one of the things that this story does not tell that I've heard people twist it into. It does not tell us that there's just different kinds of people and they're all good. That's not what this story, maybe it might be true, but it's not what this story teaches. Because Martha then, we turn her into the hardworking serving person who's constantly trying to do more and more things to make sure everything's okay. And Mary, as the devotional person who you know, senses the presence of uh, God and that kind of thing. And you know, I've had people say to me, well, Pastor, I'm just Martha. <laughs> Y'all heard that one? And, you know, others may be Mary's, but I'm a Martha. I serve Jesus by working hard. And I've seen people do that. But that's not how Jesus responded in this story. Because when Martha said, tell Mary she needs to help me, what did Jesus say? Did he say, well, Martha's just, Mary's just the kind that she serves Jesus by praying and devotions and adoring and enjoying the, my presence, and you serve Jesus by hard work? That's not what he said. What he said was, Mary has chosen the better way. Some translations say the best way. The right way. Now, it doesn't say that we ought not to do things. But what it says is the most important thing is spending time in the presence of of Jesus. And in all of the different things we can get concerned about, if we spend time regularly in the presence of Jesus, all of those other things will be taken care of. I'm not sure we believe that in our society. But it's true. You see, God is real. Jesus is here. And if we come to know Him and be with Him and experience Him, He will work in us and change us and make us what we ought to be. Now, why'd you come today? I think sometimes we're afraid to ask that question. You know, some of you are here just because it's a habit. That's not necessarily a bad reason to be here. Some of you are here because family twisted your arm. Some of you here just because you want to see other folks that are here. All of that's good. But what we hope happens here is when we come together, we meet Jesus. You know, I, 
have known some preachers that had amazing filing systems and record keeping systems. They could tell you how many times they had preached and on what passages and all that. I don't, I've never done that. But over the last how many years now, I've preached a lot of sermons. When I started out, we preached on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and other times too. It's a little bit different now. <laughs> but I've preached a lot of sermons. Uh, not all of them stand out to me. <laughs> but I remember sometimes when people come talk to me after the service. And one of the people, I won't mention his name, but many of y'all know this man, uh, came to me one Sunday after a particular message that I'd preached. And he shook my hand and he looked in my eyes. And, and I really thought about this a whole lot because he was being kind and I'm not complaining about his attitude about this. He was trying to encourage me. And I've often said, he's the person in all my ministry who knew how to encourage his pastor better than anybody else. But he looked in my eyes and he said, Pastor, that was a very well-crafted sermon today. And I thought to myself, that wasn't my purpose. And yet it made me think about what was my purpose. And here's what I hope happens when I preach. Is that you experience and that I experience the presence of Jesus like Mary did. So when Mary came to Jesus and said, tell Martha to help me. Jesus said, Mary, Mary, you are worried about many things, but Martha has chosen the better way of experiencing the presence of Jesus. What he was saying to Martha was, learn that better way. Now, we're going to sing more love to thee, O Christ. More love to thee. Y'all know that song? I hope so. What? 453 in the hymnal. And I'm going to nail here. And I want to invite some of the rest of you. I hope many of you will come and say, we are going to begin to concentrate when we gather of hoping that we will come into a special sense of the presence of Jesus. And it may be that some of you can't kneel. I understand that. Maybe you just want to come forward and find a place to sit. Maybe you want to find some other way to respond. But today what we want to say is we want to come to know the special presence of Jesus in our church and in our lives. Daryl, come and lead us. Please turn to 453.
I got here this morning, by the way, Paul, I turned this off and I can't figure out how to get it back on. It may have died. I don't know. But uh, am I on? I'm not on, but hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I got here before the rest of y'all did today, and uh, Daryl come in the back door. I forgot to unlock it. But one of the things that I was doing before he got here, and I can't believe I hadn't done this before, is I got into the pulpit here and looked in the pulpit. We talked about this yesterday, Margie and I. This, the, the, you got any idea how long this pulpit's been in, uh, involved in this church? It's been here. It's, it's a long time ago. But I was encouraged as I opened this to uh, find anointing oil in the pulpit. Praise the Lord. That's something that I'll be. There may be some of you all here today who would like to be anointed with oil as a sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so if you'd like to, to do that, I'd encourage you to just come on up here. We'll do that this morning. Uh, anybody? We just pray for Lisa today and for her family as she's come forward to be anointed. Help her, Lord, and help her family and do what needs to be done for her. We thank you. Amen. Others? Sometimes to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit, we got to be ready for whatever may happen. And I want these services, these times for us to come together, not just to be some routine of us gathering. We're going to do it on the same time every week. But to be a time when we come expecting to experience the presence of the Lord. And for every day and every time we come together. Oh Lord, we thank you for meeting with us today. Help us more and more to open our hearts and to experience the presence that you want to bring into our lives. We know, Lord, you promised that when we gather, you were there. But, Lord, help us to experience it and to be ready to hear your voice in everything we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Be good day. Before everybody leaves, Elena was going to tell us about softball games. Ah, good idea. Sorry, we have a game.